had this camera out for a while now. It looks like the 25th of February was when I put it up. I meant to come get it on the 7th of April. Today is actually 14th. So I'm going to take it out, take it inside to the scanner, and scan it. I'm using a screwdriver to pop the lid open. You got lots of nice little bug carcasses there. And you can see the image in there. Gross. All right, we're gonna put it in the scanner over here. Floppity flop, right there in the middle. I'm gonna put some paper on top of it. Close it down. Opening up the applications folder in my computer and going to an app called Image Capture, which will control the scanner. I have an Epson Perfection 4490. I select the scanner and do an overview scan, sometimes called a preview scan. It will notice where the object is on the scanner and it will automatically select it. I'm going to type in 1500 dots per inch. That gives me a five times enlargement factor if I want to have my image printed out at 300 pixels per inch. I'm going to put my name on the name Neil Cox Solargraph 2020. And then uh, JPEG is fine, but often I'll go for TIFF. None of these other image corrections, I don't want to use any of that stuff. Scan, it's gonna take a long time to scan and uh, cut out most of that here in the recording. As you'll see there, um, nothing scans that fast. Well, saving the image, I'm gonna find where it's kept in the finder. I'm using a Mac. I don't know what this would look like on a PC. You have to figure that out yourself. There it is, Neil Cox, Solargraph, 2020.tiff. Control click, open in Photoshop. Photoshop opens slower than this, but I've cut out most of the wait time. So here it opens in Photoshop. I'm going to go to view, screen mode, full screen mode with menu bar, or you could just type the letter F on your keyboard and it'll toggle between those three ski, uh, modes. The hand tool moves things around. I like to use the space bar for that. Image, image rotation, 90 degree clockwise to give it its proper orientation up and down. And then as with all pinhole cameras, it needs to be reversed. So I'm gonna flip the canvas horizontal to get the right reading, left to right. Image size is the next place I go. I type in 300 pixels per inch with the resample off so that all three of those dimensions are linked. So if you change one, it changes everything else. And so you'll see, I could print this out 22 by 50 if I wanted to. I have a roll of 24 inch paper, so that would be a nice big panorama. You could make it smaller if you wanted to. I'm gonna zoom in on the edge here and uh, see if I've got it straight. If it's not straight, I'm gonna show you how to straighten that out. Zoom out or command minus. Going over where the eyedropper tool is, it shares the space with the ruler tool. You click and drag on any edge and it will read the angle by which it deviates from perpendicular or parallel. And I can correct that. This one's just barely off. Zoom out just a little bit, command minus. Press the space bar and pull it over so I can see it a little bit better on the real estate that I've got here. Go into the crop tool and I'm going to crop out some of the things that are less uh, important dragging it in here on the right side, I've done the bottom, here on the left as well, and on the top slightly. And then I'm going to commit by hitting the check mark. You could also just press enter or return. Come down here to the layer adjustments menu and invert and it'll give you non-destructive editing capabilities. And we see the image values revert or reverse here. It's still kind of weak so I'm going to go to a curves adjustment layer. Pull that palette over to the right. I can play around with points on the curve as it reads this histogram. And as long as the preview's up, you can see in real time what these adjustments will do. I'm looking for a little more contrast, a little more brightness. So I'm playing around with the curve, sort of reading the histogram, the peaks of the histogram there. I don't want to add too many of these, and I don't like to make any sort of dramatic changes in the curve. I like it to be gentle just to bring some of the color, the contrast, and the brightness out. Look for places in the shadows where you might lose detail and bring them back. Also places in the highlights where that might happen. Just 
slide that over to the peak, that little right slider, right where the peak comes up on the bottom there, and I'll do the same thing on the left slider. There's really no information beyond those points, so I'm just increasing the contrast. I just hit the tab key to get a full view of what's going on here, and I'm inspecting it for a bit. Things look pretty good to me. I'm pretty satisfied with the way this looks. All those sun trails are really bright, as they should be, and the shadows aren't particularly dark, but they're in a good spot. I mean, this is what a solar graph looks like. I have a little problem down here in the corner. I'm going to zoom in onto it using the zoom tool. Just hit tab again to bring the tools back up. Moving that over, and I'm going to bring the crop tool up just a little bit to get rid of that little corner. I don't think I'm going to lose anything else that's a significant thing. Committing to that action, Command-0 to fit on the screen, Tab to hide everything but the image. And that looks pretty good. I think I'll keep it that way. If I wanted to make it smaller, I could make a new image, uh, copy for a smaller one, but I think I might print this out large. Don't forget to take your scan off of the scanner, particularly a wet one like this. I do not want to leave there. It will eventually fade away and die. My camera had a lot of water in it, in that little hole. See it better in the light. Hold it up. That little hole let in a lot of water, and not even really dripping out. That's how small it is. Experimental camera for long exposure. Uh, please do not disturb. 25th of February, 2020. Let's get it. 7th of April, today's 14th.